Question five. So question five is asking us about a filament bulb. You've probably done this experiment uh, in your physics studies. Um, we found out that a filament bulb doesn't obey Ohm's law, and Ohm's law is when it's a straight line graph. But this isn't a straight line graph. It's not a directly proportional relationship. Uh, so the question, the question is going to be about this graph and this situation here where by something strange happens here to the resistance of the filament bulb and it's no longer a constant resistance. first part really isn't actually about the graph, it's just about understanding and being able to define two of the most important quantities in electrics, in studying electric uh, currents, electric circuits. So firstly have a go at defining what an electric current is and then what a potential difference is. I'll just remind you before I leave you to have a go. Potential difference is that thing we used to call voltage in key stage 3. Alright, have a go and then come back. So, an electric current is the flow of charge. We do say... Oh, we do say the flow of charge rather than the flow of electrons, but at this point it is okay to say the flow of electrons. Now, what you can do is use the formula sheet here and go for the, the equation which links current, charge and time. And actually if you write that down and say Q is charge, T is time, I is current, you actually do get the mark here as well because that is the definition of current, is charge divided by time. In physics, a definition is often an equation. What's potential difference? Well, we used to say the potential difference of the voltage is the push in the circuit. That's not going to be good enough anymore for key stage 4. So we won't say it's the push. We say it's the energy given to the charge or it's the energy transferred per unit of charge. Per unit of charge. So the potential difference is the energy given to the electrons to allow them to move around the circuit. And if you'd have said that, you'd have been okay as well. Um, and again, we can define it using the equation. From the equation sheet, potential difference is work done divided by charge. Work done is energy, Q is charge, it's the energy per charge. That again, you can see the link between the equation and the definition in words. Okay, you need to remember those definitions, you need to have a good understanding of the definitions at least of those two uh, key quantities. Next question then asks us well, why does the resistance increase? That strange curve that I was talking about is because of the increase of resistance as you increase the potential difference. So why does that happen? Let's have a look here. It's worth three marks. So think about it step by step three things, three points you can make about why the potential difference increases. I'll give you a moment to have a go at that. Okay, so welcome back. The first thing to say is, well, what is that flow of charge and what does it look like? Okay, in a, in a metal, it is a... Um, flow of free electrons. So we say in the metal there are free electrons. Okay, that is what makes ele uh, metals good at conduction. Um, there's also in the metal there's also the ions, which are the bits of the atom that are left over. You could say the, there are free electrons and there are atoms. Now, if you increase the 
potential difference, you also increase the current. And that means that the electrons are flowing faster and colliding with the ions. And that gets the ions moving. It gets the ions hot and gets them jiggling around. So what happens next is that the ions vibrate more. You could say the atoms vibrate more as well. You could say they gain more energy. Or they gain heat energy. Okay, and that means, lastly, that the electrons collide more often with them. Okay, and, and that reduces the flow, or that slows the electrons down. So think about it, these are my ions. These are my little electrons. They're negative, so they want to flow towards the positive side. In doing so, they collide, there's friction between the electrons and the ions. That causes the ions to vibrate. When they vibrate, they get in the way then of the electrons and the resistance increases. So that explains that shape of the graph towards the end. The next part asks you to use a graph and to perform a calculation. So let's have a little read. Use the data from the graph to calculate the rate at which the filament bulb transfers energy when the potential difference across the bulb is 6 volts. So we've got to use the graph to get some information at 6 volts. And use the correct equation from the physics equation sheet. Show clearly how you work out your answer and then there's a place for the answer. Now. I'm going to give you a bit of a clue here because we don't often call this quantity the rate at which the filament bulb transfers energy. The rate at which the filament bulb transfers energy is the power. So when you go to your equation sheet in a moment, look for something that links power, potential difference, and what is the other thing that you can get from the graph? Okay, have a little go at that and then come back. Okay, so uh, I hope you found from the equation sheet that power is current times voltage. Or potential difference. Power is current times potential difference. Okay, I'm going to go to the graph and I'm going to do this question on the graph. The clue also was down there, wasn't it, that what is the unit of power? Here we go, here's the graph. So, it was the power when the potential difference was 6 volts. So, to get that information from the graph, we need to find 6 volts go up towards the line, I'm trying to do this carefully, you'll use a ruler obviously in the test, and then you're going to come across to the other axis, this is the skill, this is interpolation, one point something, All right, there's 10 boxes between 1 and 1.5, so each box is worth a half, uh, or 0 0.05, 1.1, 1 1.2, ah, that's 
So voltage is 6 volts, current is 1.3, check the unit, amps. Power is current times voltage, which is 1.3 times 6. Go for the calculator, don't make your life any harder than it has to be. 7.8 and the unit was given watts. In this question you get a mark for correctly getting the current from the graph and a mark for 7.8. The only tricky part about that really was recognising that power is the rate of energy transfer. Not too far. Um, this has the end of the question. Okay, come back for question six then.